Okay, uh, our next speaker is Benjamin Pierce. Uh, ben is a professor at the University of Pennsylvania, and he's going to be telling us about uh, the second type session tomorrow. Thank you. All right, so for something completely different, this is the Types 2 session, again tomorrow. So uh, this session has these three papers. I'm sure you can't read it from the back, so let me reorganize it and, uh, and show you how they fit together. This is a very interesting group of papers because they all share uh, a common uh, basis in intersection types in one way or another. Um, two of them actually share a common basis not only in intersection types but also in an interest in record calculation and operations on records. And two of them also have an intersection in the author list. So it's a very intersection-y session. Uh, let's talk about where it all comes from. So record calculation. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, a lot of people, especially in the so-called fool foundations of object-oriented languages community, were interested in operations on records. The reason was that uh, objects, which people were interested in trying to study because there were all these object-oriented languages out in the world, and they didn't seem to have any foundations, uh, people started trying to think of foundations. Luca Cardelli was the, the biggest name in that effort, but there were many, many others involved. Um, trying to find kind of type theoretic or lambda calculus, um, type lambda calculus foundations for object-oriented languages. And it seemed clear that objects were just some kind of records, records of functions. So if we had a rich enough uh, lambda calculus of records, then that would get us some distance toward being able to model objects. So this led to a ton of work uh, on various record calculi operations on records um, were the kind of words that were used. And uh, what people were trying to do was have type systems that would allow you to, for example, um, polymorphically take, take a record that you don't know exactly what record it is or what, what type of record it is. Uh, you just know that it's some record type and add a new field to it. Uh, that function, of course, that takes an arbitrary record, I'm sorry if you can't see it in the back, takes an arbitrary record and, and concatenates that record with a new field, uh, x. That function may or may not be well formed because what if that record type already had an x field? Well, what does that mean? Uh, it could mean different things. It could mean, well, okay, it already has an x field, but we're going to overwrite the x field. Uh, it could mean that. It could mean, no, it shouldn't have an X field, and we have to somehow uh, restrict the type quantifier to quantify only over types that don't have X fields. Uh, or we could just say, well, uh, now it has two X fields, and if you look up the X field, that's going to be a non-deterministic operation. Um, the latter, just allowing it to be non-deterministic, is a little bit distasteful. So people spend a lot of effort trying to avoid that. Not everybody. But people spend a lot of effort trying to avoid that, and, uh, and that is actually, um, that effort is the source of uh, two of the papers in this session. Let's talk about intersection types. Intersection types can be thought of and were originally thought of as a sort of finitary polymorphism. So you could, you could form types like int arrow int and bool arrow bool, and that would be a type for the identity function. Um, and they were studied very heavily, again, starting uh, in the early 80s, both in the setting of pure type lambda calculi, where people were interested in things like using intersection types to characterize normalizing terms. So um, there was a theorem, a uh, famous theorem, that said that in a certain type system with intersection types, every typable ter uh, the set of typable terms is exactly the set of normalizing terms. Uh, so that's cool. 
But intersection types also turned out to be useful for programming, and John Reynolds was the first to design a programming language with intersection types at the heart of its type system. And the observation that Reynolds made was that uh, there was a nice connection between intersections and record operations. So uh, a record type, I'm sorry if it's um, hard to read in the back, but a record type with two fields, X and Y, is kind of like a thing with two separate types. It, it simultaneously has uh, the type of single field records with a field X and single field records with a field Y. So intersections were a really nice way of thinking about records. However, once again, you have to be a little careful about determinism because if you just take arbitrary values and squish them together to form things of intersection type, you can get into trouble. For example, suppose you take the values true and false and squish them together into a single value and say, well, it has type bool and bool, which is the same as bool. So this is just a Boolean. Which Boolean? Both. Well, okay, fine, but then what if you test it? What does the program do if it, uh, if it tests the Boolean true merged with false? And the answer is, uh, things get weird. So uh, the choices are deal with the weirdness or maybe a better choice, uh, disallow the weirdness. Don't allow true to be merged with false in a well-typed way. Namely, think about the merge operator on types being a partial operator applying only to disjoint types. Well, what does disjoint mean? And then it gets interesting and um, the first paper in this session uh, sorry, uh, we'll come back to that in the second paper in this session. The first paper in this session uh, is taking this notion of disjointness and, um, and using it to generalize the idea of removing a field from a record to a, a, a general form of subtracting from a type. So subtracting one type from another. Uh, so very quickly, uh, the idea is to define a calculus with a general notion of subtract one type from another. Um, you have to be careful about the semantics of the language and, uh, and again this goes back to Reynolds and the Forsyth language uh, because it's crucial that in this setting the semantics is coercive when you go from a subtype to a supertype, you're throwing away or collapsing information, not just changing your view of the type. So in this paper, they talk about a general definition of type difference based on this coercive subtyping. They give an algorithm for computing type difference, uh, and they translate all of this into a lower level calculus with just disjoint intersection. There's disjointness coming up again and merging. Uh, and there's a language you can play with. In the second paper in this session, uh, the, the key idea here is uh, a closer analysis of the idea of disjointness. So when are two types disjoint and hence mergeable or intersectable? Uh, and they actually split the notion of disjointness into two subtly different ones called mergeability and, dis and disjointness uh, arising from the logical um, uh, dichotomy between positive and negative uh, types. What's interesting about this is that this refined notion of disjointness allows you to define a more powerful, more flexible uh, disjoint merge operation. Okay, so the contributions here are this, oops, this core calculus uh, called, called FBO with disjoint intersection types with these two flavors of disjointness plus union types, all with a deterministic merge operation. Uh, third paper, on the other side of the fence. So I said uh, that back in the old days, there was, this, um, there was the uh, pure lambda calculus people and there were the programming language people. We've seen two programming language people papers and now we have a pure lambda calculus paper. Um, these authors are studying what they call quantitative inhabitation for 
uh, well, they study the problem of inhabitation for a so-called quantitative intersection type system. By quantitative, they mean non-item potent. That is, uh, that is a type system in which T intersect T is not the same type as T. T intersect T is a type that has two uses of T and, uh, and T by itself just has one use of T. So uh, by removing this item potence rule and, uh, and, and sort of counting the number of intersections, uh, you give yourself a quantitative interpretation of the language because uh, that, that allows you to, uh, where types uh, place a bound on the possible runtime uh, of typable terms. And in this setting, they study the problem of when is a type inhabited? Concretely, given a type environment at a type, is there a term of that type in that type environment? Actually, they study this problem in a generalized form, not just is there a term, not just what is a term, but what is a finitary characterization of all such terms? That's the problem they solve in this paper. Hope to see you at the session. Cool. Thank you, Ben. Let's thank both of our speakers for condensing this information for us and placing a bound on your own run.